Mm -hmm. uh, what did everyone think in terms of this story? Obviously, we won't go into like super big spoilers or anything. Maybe just some like early-ish stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was about to say some of us aren't even. <laughs> I, like, I like um a lot of the characters. Um, I like Jackie. Jackie's I think... a bro. Uh, yeah, I like I don't like um other characters like 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 Takamura and Pan Am. And others, I think, though, where I, I think so far, the story has really yet to have uh, told me to care. <laughs> um, I, right now, I really care about a lot. Like, like I care more about the fixers than, than what's going to happen a little bit. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I feel like I'm the complete opposite. I love the weird, like, love, hate. I hate you too much relationship that uh, oh, like V Johnny. and and like yeah, that, that a V and V and Johnny have, and I know how because this happened with Death with with Death Stranding. You can tell that like Mads and Dio is gonna hate me for saying this, but Dio Mads kind of just felt like he was there. He didn't really do much, <laughs> at least to me. I know Dio. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. But it's just like to me, you could just tell that like. Keanu Reeves was loving being there. Like he was enjoying himself. He was having a great time playing a character that's like a complete jackass. And I love his portrayal of Johnny a lot. And we were going to talk about this earlier. Uh, the voice actress for Feminine V's voice is just so much better than the male one. She has such personality. And there was a couple scenes where I was legitimately kind of heartbroken at the beginning, which is how she was like voicing her lines and how she was acting her lines. When I when I was just like feeling her like anger and feeling her like her like depression that I was that, that I was just like like I I love all the characters I uh, I love Jackie a lot I haven't got my feel on Pan Am yet like I like her personality but I'm just like eh. and just <laughs> Takamura's weird text that he sends you and V just be like what the fuck are you trying to say and he's like I'm talking in code and she's like don't do that. <laughs> talk normally it's just like there's like little like bits of like humor and like some really intense story bits and like stuff stuff between johnny and v like i i like eat that shit up so i'm enjoying it uh i just wish this is gonna be my own nitpick because i'm one of those people i wish there was more legitimate romance options in the game but that's just me because there's I only like two for each character like two like main story ones and i'm just like <laughs> I feel like one of my oh. complaints with this story is not necessarily cyberpunk's fault. It's more of just open world design. I don't open world games necessarily lend themselves to a uh, well paced story, just kind of inherently traveling from A to B. And then you mm -hmm. add side quests into that and other activities mm -hmm. kind of destroys a facade of like of a strong linear story. Um, but I don't, I am not really invested in, in the main story like and yes you can say like every story's tropey and everything but i just i don't know no, nothing's really sticking out to me like i like johnny i like the i the idea of um mm -hmm. his his chip slowly taking over um I, I really like jackie but like everyone else like all the side stories it's more just like go do some mercenary work, go do this thing. And it's, it's weird to think that, and I, I would have to look up like the exact staff, or whatever, but that this came from the same team that was working on the Witcher because like every individual side quest, even the little um, contract missions that you did to eliminate monsters, uh, each quest giver was an actual person and they gave you like their own unique little backstory. And they had like tiny little pieces of humor of them that actually made, um, that arguably made the side content even more appealing than the main story. Well, I so think I, you can I'm also just... argue. Sorry, I can also argue it's because The Witcher came from a book series that had established narratives already in it. I mean, that's well, the same thing with Cyberpunk. It's it came well, from um, a, a, a pen and paper game is different. Players can make their own stories, even if there's like established plots in the Cyberpunk pen and pen and paper game, which which there is. What makes it different from D and D? is that there is established plot that you follow that you just throw your characters into and there's established characters and established all this stuff. 
But, and I mean, it's kind of weird because Mike, Mike Ponsmith, the original creator of the pen and paper game, helped with this story. I don't think he helped with the characters, say for like Johnny and a few others that were in the pen and paper game to begin with. But he helps with like the base storyline and the plot. And I think this suffers from, if you didn't, if you know nothing about Cyberpunk 2020, which is the, which is the pen and paper game that this is based off of, you kind of get that fish out of water experience while with the while with the witcher yes if you read the books you get that extra background but i never felt like i needed to read the books when i played the witcher if that makes sense like i mean for what it's worth that's how i background but yeah for what it's worth that's (laughs) how i experienced um i started with the witcher 3 i felt like i was missing context went back to witcher 1 2 then beat 3 and now i'm kind of in the middle of the uh, Witcher books, which I really need to get back to reading it. It's a bit of a dry read, but that's a whole other different story. There's some books in there that are not as entertaining. Yeah. Um, but but just to slightly push back against the the established world, like so many of those uh, little quests in, um, in The Witcher 3 had nothing to do with just like um, established characters and whatnot. Like they were just like nice little isolated stories that didn't necessarily contribute to to any kind of like overall narrative but i think Mm -hmm. our i think one of my bigger issues with the story and just kind of like an overall issue and this this is definitely something that more development time could have ironed out is that the game just has a severe pacing issue and i think one example i'll specifically kind of navigate around it's it's the scene where you are hiding in the hotel behind the Mm -hmm. thing um and like you can you can chalk some of this up to their dedication to wanting to be first person do it all in one shot um but even just the way that characters talk the way they move around it's it's just awkward pacing it doesn't feel nice and tight and it's just like i i am just actively losing interest in this and it just feels really guilty Mm-hmm. See, I feel weird because I loved that scene. See, I hate being on this because I love everything that no one else likes. Like, I loved that scene. Just being like, just being in that window area, I felt the anxiety of whenever someone would turn to look your direction, and I'm like, oh fuck, that person's gonna see, or that person's gonna see, or oh my god, we just witnessed this. Now we gotta get out. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I loved that tension, and I totally get why people wouldn't. So I totally understand like your point of view, but I loved it. I thought that tension was like I, really great. I think I look at something like um, the newer Wolfenstein games, where you know you play them all in first person, and they have these just like excellent freaking um, mm-hmm. uh, third person cutscenes, and they're just like so edited and paced the way that characters talk to each other. It's just so fucking on point, and for a game where. There's uh, the first thing you literally do is spend like an hour customizing your character. And like, that's a whole big theme in he- of here. Uh, not being able to really see your character is a gigantic wasted opportunity. And yeah. doing third person cut scenes could have actually let you see you. Mm-hmm. So that, that dedication mm-hmm. of first person is kind of contrary to what they're trying to do. I mean, I mean, talking about like customization, like, you can't even change your hairstyle once you pick it in from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like mm, this and this game about a world that's all about making you the you you want to be. Yeah. You can't change your mind about the you you want to be. Mm-hmm. The game it's, doesn't even feature transmog. Like <laughs> I would hope that'd be the, something that they patch in. But. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the trans transmog I'm not entirely angry about. I think because I'm so blessed with games like World of War, Warcraft have extensive transmog, and I'm like, okay, I can. But I feel like with with the whole idea that you can't change your hair or you can't change your ta- ta- tattoos or anything is like definitely a wasted p- p- potential. I yeah. think I'm more than confident that will eventually be patched in. Yeah. But it's, it, it, I, I mean, like if it just more people complain about it, continues to go by by my thing of broken promises. Um, here's one. Okay, let me talk about this real quick. Um, so there's a side mission that you can get. Um, um, uh, there's a there's a um, there's a uh, high end clothing store. I think it's called like Jinguchi. I think. Um, there's a side mission where um, we go there. 
um, the stoner like talks to you for a second, and then you get attacked by a cyber psycho, right? Um, so you you pretend you you stop the cyber psycho, the police come. You tell them what happens, and then the shop owner guys, you know what? Next time, swing by. I got something special for you. Nothing. There's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing. And there's other cool bits in that side mission. Like, yeah, you know, I'm just. There's just one side mission. I'm just gonna. I hope it's it's just one, right? It should be okay. You guys okay with me just saying what the cool, really cool thing about the side mission is? Yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah, I guess. All right. So one of the, so the police officer that comes by is the woman in the mantis blades from the original trailer. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love that shit. No, you don't understand. Mm-hmm. Like the whole fucking lizard thing and this, like, pop this shit. Mm-hmm. And I, you can have a whole conversation with her. And one of the options that you can end up getting to is she goes, hey, why don't you join the force? And you're like, oh, sure, maybe I'll think about it. Nothing. More nothing. More broken promises. You go and you want to order a spunky monkey, and then and then these guys show up and, and try to rob the place, and the guy and you stop them, and the guy goes, oh, next one's on me. And then you open up the menu, you see the bottle for fifty for fifty dollars. It's just I just feel I just <laughs> constantly am let down by every aspect of whatever world buildings in this game. Another thing about that is when you do end up getting free stuff, like with the free uh, cybernetic upgrades, it's hidden in the menus. So like, it's not like when you go and talk to the person, it's like, hey, I was sent here by this person to get this thing free. The game doesn't tell you. You need to go into the menus and find that one specific item that you're going to get free and <laughs> equip it. It's so dumb. Like It's just like, just give me a fucking little di- that dialogue option. Says, hey, I was sent here because I did this, and you're going to give me this thing free. They can just give it to you. It's a lot easier than having to search through all the upgrades and be like, ah, yes, this is the one specific item that you promised to give me free. Just give it to me. <laughs> Don't make me find it. The user all- is really bad. Mm-hmm. Can we all agree it's really annoying when it tells you, yeah, you should go read the shard, then you have to dig through that giant drop down oh, menu to find oh. it? Ah, there oh. was a side quest where I didn't even know where the fuck the shard menu was. I had to Google it. <laughs> or like, <laughs> or like, or text somebody and you open up your phone menu and go to their name and hit message and you get at the top of the message <laughs> menu. And like, <laughs> See, I've I've had it where I keep accidentally calling that one lady that gives you gigs. And I feel like uh, she's annoyed Regina. by me at this point. <laughs> I to text her you used to be a journalist, her. weren't you? I'm like, listen, man, I'm sorry. I, I was supposed to text you, accidentally called you, goodbye. <laughs> you know? Like, what the fuck? I had something important also, to tell you, but I called you. Can't tell you. Gotta text it. Yeah, gotta also, text I, it. I don't know if this is just the PS5 version, but I have to double click my middle button to open my map. I click it once and it instantly exits out of it. Yeah, that's a bug apparently <laughs> everyone has. Yeah. It's I know so I'm, weird. I have to like double click it. <laughs> on uh, PC for me, whenever I'm using controller at least, the. Uh, and it's an Xbox. It's not called the menu. Whatever the fuck the stupid three line thing is, is that it, just. If I hold, squares? it's lines. the The hamburger button, not the cheese. <laughs> the slices. hamburger button. Yeah. yeah, the hamburger button. The line. Um, if, I've if, never if, heard of hold that. Yeah, if if you hold it, it goes to the. Me- what what do you call it? It's the three three. Yeah, I call it the is, menu button. That, that like is a called the it, it's, it's called button. a hamburger menu. I, I learned that a few years ago. It's called a hamburger menu. I was like, what? That's what? dumb. Can we agree? Because it doesn't say menu. It's there's, there's no words on it. Yeah, we've lost start and select a long time ago. We we have options and share. Or, uh, no, that doesn't even have the name on on the on the dual, not dual shock five. The dual no, sense. It's, 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 it's a hamburger button. It's lines and it's. Oh my god! If, if one more fucking person on this call calls it a hamburger button, I'm leaving. It's hamburgers and fries. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace the hamburger feature. <laughs> I I hate this. I didn't uh, know one of the senses on the dual sense was was taste. <laughs> I'm not licking my dual sense. <laughs> oh god. Uh, 